I'm sorry, the number you're trying to reach is not available. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Or did I? Because thanks to the miracle of real-time analytics, I can watch audience engagement throughout the video. <laughs> Incredible. So all I have to do is keep an eye on that so I can react appropriately to whether the video is going well or not. Now, let's get into today's subject. Let's learn how telephones work. And we can do this by building this old telephone kit. You know, maybe the future of data analytics should stay right where it is, in the future. Like I said, today let's build a telephone. What I find interesting about this kit is that it claims to be solderless, which is convenient for me since my beautiful perfect workspace is on lockdown, and my current workspace looks something a little like this. But how do they do this, you may ask? Well, I don't actually know, but let's find out. Ah, feels cheap. Now it says here this is for ages 10 and up, so uh, if you're below the age of 10, I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, leave the video. So maybe you're asking, of all the things I could choose to make a video about, why would I want to build this mysterious kit from the late 90s? Well, the last two videos I made were too politically charged to be allowed on YouTube. So, you know what, uh, let's see them take this one down. Ooh, instructions. Real men throw these away right from the start. Oh, I see, it breaks it up into ten handy-dandy steps. Oh, this is going to be easy. And each of the components seem to be labeled with the step that it corresponds to. Wasn't the 90s just better? Step 1. Put a plastic lever on a pivot with a spring pushing it outward. This is the hang up button. Not much to say about this step, really. Step 2. The cradle needs to be heavy, so add a weight. Step 3. The first interesting step, this is the ringer circuit. You see, the telephone office provides 48 volts through the phone line constantly. When the phone is idle, no current flows, so no power is wasted. This is done with a capacitor in series with the ringer. When somebody calls, a 90 volt AC voltage is sent to the ringer. Back in the day, this was used to ring a bell on the phone. These days, it just rings a speaker or a buzzer. The voltage is so high because most of it is lost from the wire resistance between you and the central office, meaning it is between 6 and 12 volts when you are using the phone. Let's check the buzzer real quick with a 9 volt battery. It's okay, my smoke detector didn't need it. All good here. Step 4. Put it all together. When the phone is on the hook, the lever from step 1 keeps the ringer idle. When you pick up the phone, the ringer stops. Step 5. Put together the handset. Step 6. Put the buttons in the right spot. Are you kidding me? Step 6. Put the buttons in the right spot. Step 7. This is where the real magic happens. Whenever you push a button, it pushes one of the tabs onto this exposed metal on the circuit board, shorting across it like closing a switch. From there, an electrical current goes into this single integrated chip called a Tone Pulse Switchable Dialer. Basically, how this works is when you press a key, it generates a unique tone for that key, which you can hear every time you press the button. The phone company's central office listens for the tone to figure out what button you just pressed. Once the central office checks to see if the dialed number is busy or not, they connect both people. Once a call is established, both people talk through their microphone and speaker until the call ends by either party hanging up. In my case, that's almost exclusively the other party. <clears throat> Which brings us to step 8. Install the microphone and speaker. Without soldering, wires can be connected by twisting them together, laying the twist flat, then sliding a tube over it to prevent them from shorting out. Step 9. Put the handset together. Day 10. Dinner. I'm a little busy right now, Mom. 
Well, where would the inventor of penicillin be if he let his sandwich get all moldy? Step 10. Finish up a few quality of life features. And now we're done. Our phone is finished. Let me quickly touch on a few things that I passed over while we were building. Pulse tone switching. This is a remnant of ye olden days when rotary phones existed. When a rotary phone number was dialed, say 5, and you let it go, it would make 5 pulses on its way back to the home position. The phone company would know that you selected 5. Today, we typically use two-tone dialing. When you press, say, 5 again, it would be a combination of 1336 Hz and 770 Hz. Redial! The HM91710 chip can remember the last number that you dialed, up to 32 digits for a quick redial. This is all done within the chip. Mute. Shorts the microphone to ground so it generates no electrical signal. Flash. If you don't want to put the phone back on the hook, pressing flash will get a dial tone back. That's about it, I think. This device is incredibly basic. The telephone was invented in 1876 as a means for people to send and receive voice signals. Every telephone is connected to a central office. Back in the days, this meant that a person would physically sit behind this giant panel called a switchboard and manually route calls. But today, this is all done automatically. As you can imagine, this system is not simple. Along with the aforementioned task, it must also generate a busy signal, keep track of call lengths for billing purposes, route calls to other central offices, and connect voice recordings to advise you of problems in completing calls. But I'd say it's worth it. A lot of phone companies that hate them, there's no denying that they were, and are, an important part of our daily lives.